Hi, she was seven. I'm back with Diaries of a Former Mortician vlog 15. I think it's 15. Is it 15 already or is it 14? I think it's 15. Okay. So I got a few questions about um, the embalming process and where do the organs go and what do you do with the intestines and the guts and all that stuff. And I think I explained it once before, but it might have been too technical. So basically, uh, we embalm the body, which is making an incision right here and putting like this metal piece connected to a tube inside your artery. And it basically just pushes embalming fluid into your body. And then we cut open a vein to where the blood can actually exit the body. So we're replacing the blood with embalming fluid. And then while that's going on, we will take this giant like a syringe needle that's about this fat about that fat it's called a trocar and it's like long it's like a sword it looks like a sword okay and we stab you in the stomach like right here we stab you in the stomach and it's hooked up to a machine that sucks into the sink it sucks everything out of your um, thoracic cavity which is your from here all the way to your genitals. And so you're just like stabbing inside the body and sucking. It's kind of like liposuction, but you're sucking out all the uh, liquid in the organs. You're puncturing each organ. You're stabbing each organ and sucking whatever's in it out. It's kind of like a liposuction, but you're sucking out all the stuff in the organs, all the stuff in the intestines, all the stuff in your lungs, all the stuff in your... Uh, stomach, colon, liver, for men, testicles, okay? Yeah, we stab those two and suck all the juice out of it, okay? Um, so that's what happens to your organs. And if you were autop if you had an autopsy, the medical examiner has already removed every organ in your body, even your brain. And they have placed it in a trash bag. And they have poured embalming fluid all over your organs in the trash bag so then they place the trash bag inside your chest area put your chest plate back on sew you up call us and tell us to come pick you up then when we get you to the funeral home we unsew you we take off your chest plate we uh, we go ahead and leave the bag of organs inside of your body but we have this embalming powder that we put on like the inside of your body where you've been hollowed out. It's kind of like uh, when you put flour on chicken. Yeah, that's what we do. And so we put the embalming powder on the inside of your body and then we embalm the legs and the arms and from the neck up as well. Uh, there's no brain in your head when you're buried after an autopsy. So then we have to sew your, we have to pull your skin back up and sew you from here to here. But you have no brain in there because it's in your tummy in a bag. Okay. Um, and then you're, I know a lot of y'all going to ask, well, what, why do people get autopsies and do I have to get an autopsy? In certain states, there's different laws. In my state, if you die, if you have suicide, you get an autopsy automatically. If you uh, are murdered, um, it just depends on the, the situation. If you are in a car accident, you get an autopsy because they want to do a toxicology and to see if well, all the internal damage that was done. And uh, um, So yeah, if you die young of like unexplained causes and you didn't have any medical conditions, yeah. So the state kind of takes over and they they ask you know to do the autopsy and sometimes you can't say no now the family if they have their own you know suspicions they can actually request an autopsy and pay a private doctor to come to the funeral home and perform a private autopsy and get their own results especially if they don't 
uh, trust the medical examiner because they have so many bodies coming through there. They work really fast. Sometimes they skip over details. Sometimes they get stuff wrong. So uh, it's kind of like having a second opinion. So yes. Um, and that's really, you know, what happens during the embalming process um, besides the bathing, and the dressing, the makeup, and the hair. So, um, yeah, so if you're drinking and driving, if you die of a drug overdose, if you kill, kill yourself, if you die young unexpectedly, they're going to automatically do an autopsy on you. So, And also, like, if you get cremated, the, some states require you to wait um, 72 hours before cremation in certain cases because um, you could be trying to get rid of evidence and file play and if there's some some kind of uh, suspicion they will automatically re take the body back from the funeral home and do an autopsy on it because uh, and you know while you're waiting like if you don't want to get embalmed and you're waiting to be cremated they keep you in a refrigerator a giant refrigerator like a walk-in freezer well it's not a freezer but it's a refrigerator that's how they keep you in the medical examiner's office, too. It's a big, giant, refrigerated room just full of bodies. And um, that's basically it. Uh, if you have any other questions about the embalming process or, you know, other things, y'all let me know. Um, also, like, this past week, I wanted to tell y'all, like, I've been uh, experiencing some crazy stuff. Like, uh, I just moved, right? So, um, there's been like dead birds, dead squirrels in my yard. My dog got hit by a car and like all of a sudden that's like triggered some past memories, some dreams that I used to have. Like, uh, like when I was a mortician, I used to dream about dead people a lot because, you know, I worked with dead people. So I dreamed about them a lot. Um, like last night for the first time since I was a mortician, which was maybe 11 years ago, no, more than that, um, I dreamt about dead people. Like, I don't know these people, um, but they're still alive. Like, they're, like, not dead. But they're, it's weird. If y'all ever seen Six Feet Under, you know how the dead people talk to the morticians? It's kind of like that um, in my dream. Uh, it's probably because I watched that show. But, yeah, I dreamt, like, um, there were these, there was a car accident and then there was two people, a woman and a man that were killed in the car accident, laying in the street and people were just looking at them and they were still like, to me, they were dead, but to me that they, they were still alive and they were like, Oh, what happened to us? Oh, what happened to us? I'm like, you're dead. Uh, so all these weird events have like triggered my memory of working with dead people and death. So I'm hoping my dog makes it. He got hit by a car. And I think um, he'll be okay. Um, it stops him from killing birds because he's like his leg is hurt. But it's just weird. Uh, so I'm going to end this vlog. If y'all have any more questions, y'all let me know. Uh, <sighs> I might, uh, I'm going to answer all your questions. So whatever you ask me, it will be in the next video. So make sure you ask, okay? All right, peace.